Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome. Hope you guys are doing well. I still have morning voice. <laughs> I can tell that just when I say good morning. Are we there? Are we live? I believe we are. At least my phone says we are. Good morning, Michael. Hey, Freddie. <laughs> uh. Hey, Freddie. Thank you so much. I haven't even used it yet, but it's right here. <laughs> Matthew's Cutter. <laughs> Compliments of Freddie Moretti. Hello, there's another Floridian there, Freddie. Actually, I didn't even check if it fit either. <laughs> I never got you the measurement. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. This is a different stamp, but this is... Uh, yeah, it, it does. It fits this one, so I'm assuming it'll fit the other one. Hey, Sally. Hey there. Pottery Works. That was John, right? <laughs> Hey Janet, <laughs> yeah, a little little bit of a uh, teaser on the on the video title there, huh? Hey Carla, okay, I got it right, Pot. I got it right, John. Good. <laughs> At least I'm assuming that's what the thumbs up means. All right, so uh, yeah, this is gonna replace my video for today uh, that I would normally upload on Saturday morning. And I'll I'll be I'll be quick and tell you uh, good morning, Danny. I'll quick I'll be quick and tell you. Actually, I started recording the video yesterday um, that I was going to upload today. Uh, and to be honest with you, yesterday was one of those days that uh, that I just didn't feel like making a video. I didn't feel like uh, putting handles on the coffee mugs I have over here. I still have. Um, I still have some, um, coffee mugs over here. I handled, I had like 24 coffee mugs. That's all I had. And for me, that's not a whole lot. I handled like eight of them and I'm like, all right, they need to stiffen up a little bit. And I was like, I don't really feel like doing that. So they're all still covered up over there. I haven't finished the handles on those. Um, and I was doing some other things and then, Hey Alonzo. Hey Marianne. Uh, and then I, uh, I came out here uh, last night and I was uh, starting to record the video and I just, I wasn't feeling it. I didn't, I didn't feel like doing it. And uh, I know there are plenty of times as, as all of us adults know that there are things that we have to do even we don't feel like it. Um, all right, welcome from the Dutch Caribbean. Tommy, Mary, welcome, welcome, Colleen. Eastern side of Australia. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's awesome. Welcome. Kelly, welcome. So anyway, so I, I started recording the video and then uh, I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to push it today. I'm just going to, I'm just going to not do the video tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to, this was last night. I'm going to just uh, do a, a, a live video tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. when I would normally have a video go live and then, uh, so that was my plan. So last night, like I said, I started recording it and I could have done it. I, I, I've, there's been plenty of times that I've just made myself do things that I don't want to do. And I could have made the video and I, I, I was, you know, edited it last night, had it uploaded and I'd have been fine. But I thought, so what the, the idea I had yesterday, so here's the idea I had because I didn't feel like doing it yesterday. I thought, you know what, the best thing for me to do uh, and also looked down the list of my video ideas that I have and I thought I don't really want to do any of those either So not that they're bad ideas. I just didn't feel like it. So I thought you know what I, I've, I've been wanting to make a piece or or to at least maybe pick out a piece But I really wanted to make a special piece and donate it have a piece that I make that I could auction off to help raise money for a local charity to help people during this time so um well, welcome, welcome. I hope this does inspire you. So anyway, so uh, I, I think I did finally come up with the idea the other day of what I'm going to make that I can auction off. So, um, and this piece will, will definitely not be for everybody. 
Um, and I won't be able to finish it today, but I'm going to start it. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to take and make a, I've got a six pound clay ball over here. I'm going to make a jug as big as I can out of that six pounds. And then what I thought I would do is take and, and put a bunch, instead of putting one face on it, so it wouldn't be just one face on the face jug, it would be multiple faces on the face jug. And then each of the faces are going to have a little mask over the face. I mean, all out of clay. Uh, and they're going to be all separated apart. So it's kind of like a play on the idea of social distancing this whole time. Kind of a statement piece. Uh, and because face jugs are collectible anyways, and people make all kinds of jugs. People make devil jugs. People make snake jugs, skull jugs, all kinds of just crazy things. I thought, you know what? This could be a statement piece that if somebody does collect face jugs, that this could be something that I could uh, auction off and then give all that money that it, that it raises to a local charity um, to help out uh, somebody who's really in need right now. So, or multiple people that are really in need. So anyway, so that's the idea. So, uh, um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna uh, make that jug today. And I've got, uh, if, if, if for some reason the first one doesn't work, I got some other clay here. Um, but anyway, so that's that's why I said we're gonna make something special. So, so. All right, cool. I'm glad you guys like the idea. So we'll uh, we'll get started here, and uh, it's it's uh, it got down to almost freezing last night here in North Carolina. I know if you're probably up north somewhere, that's nothing. Um, but uh, but for here, it was chilly. So I had my heat on last night, so it's not too bad. But I'm gonna keep my my keep my flannel shirt on and just roll my sleeves up. Hey, Bert, welcome. <laughs> Yeah, happy Easter to you too. We're actually going to do a uh, drive-in service today at our church because it's supposed to rain here tomorrow. We were going to do it tomorrow, but uh, we're going to do it this afternoon so we can uh, still be in compliance with all that's going on, but uh, have a drive-in service so we can all kind of have a live service. But anyway, <laughs> that's good. Perfect timing. You're right. All right, so I'm going to uh, adjust my light down here real quick because it, it, I think it's too high. All right, there we go. I got some warm water here. I got my uh, six pound clay ball and we're gonna get rolling. Uh, I need a little bit of, I'm going to put some clay underneath my bat so that it sticks a little better. Just get some out of my slip bucket over there. Alright, there was a couple questions, or at least one question there I missed as I was getting up. Yeah, I know. I'm going to adjust it down, Sally. <laughs> uh, I pretty much always use warm water. Um, I, I don't like to throw with cold water. Um, even in the summer, even in the summertime, I, uh, I throw with I, I, at least lukewarm water. I, I hardly ever like cold water. I just really like warm water when I'm throwing, so... So this is the clay ball from the thumbnail. <laughs> My daughter was out here helping me uh, do that last night. We took the picture out here together and Yeah, the, uh, um, I believe I saw that question right. My bats are, they're smooth on both sides. They're uh, treated or tempered uh, masonite uh, or hardboard. And uh, most of these, I, I didn't make them myself. I bought, I bought them. 
Yeah, this one's gonna be a round bat. Uh, I use my round bats usually when I'm making larger pieces. Um, and so seeing this is six pounds, if I use the square ones and I have a six pound clay ball, sometimes the, the clay ball gets out close to the edge and then end up catching my finger on the edge of the square bat and that doesn't feel good, so. <laughs> Probably make a couple jugs anyways. I, I'm glad I got the extra clay. Because it'd be nice to either have another one of these to just make a different face jug out of, or maybe even make more than one and auction off a couple of them. So. I'm trying to think of, I was trying to think of a good size too, and I figured six, ten, six pounds would be a, a decent sized jug that I could put several smaller faces on, like I said, um, instead of doing one big face. I originally thought about doing two faces, one on each side of a jug, and then, you know, have it be the social distancing written in between them or something like that. But then when I thought of the smaller ones and then I thought of the mask, I saw, I saw a picture of, I don't remember the name of the painting, but the, it's the, the farmer with the pitchfork and his wife that old painting, and I saw a picture, uh, kind of like a recreation of that, but it, but they had masks on their face. And I thought, you know what? I could do that with a face jug and then put masks on their face, add a little, you know, strips of clay. Uh, so, American Gothic, there you go. <laughs> I don't know if I ever knew the name of that picture, so <laughs> hopefully you got it right, Alonzo. So because I'm making a jug, I'm definitely going to leave a little bit more clay in the top. Uh, yeah, if you guys can, if you've been here from the beginning, if, if anybody asks a question, you know the answer to, I appreciate you helping out there. So, yeah, because I'm, like I said, because I'm throwing a jug, I'm going to pull this in at the top. I want to leave a little bit of extra clay in the, in the top if I can while I'm pulling this. So that I, and, and I don't get it too wide also. So that I can close that in at the top and make a nice uh, top on the jug. Like I said, uh, I figured if if people can make devil jugs and snake jugs and all that stuff, I figured I can make a. A jug with multiple faces on it, which I've seen that before, and then put masks on them, and it would be kind of a, like I said, a statement piece for the time. I will tell you guys something. This is this is something that I I was I was thinking about putting this in a video, anyways, uh, but I watched a uh, part of a podcast the other day, and in the the very beginning, they were talking about wearing masks during this time and uh i i've been to the grocery store several times and and not worn a mask and uh because i didn't i didn't like the idea of 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 looking like oh i'm trying to protect myself from everybody else in the sense that you know just didn't want you know this kind of a i don't know that we have something you know especially i think in american culture we have this thing of like you know if you can't see somebody's face it's like you feel like you're hiding something and that's probably more than just american culture but um but anyway so <clears throat> And I, I realized uh, after the, the conversation was going on that podcast, they got talking about how, you know, really if you're wearing a mask, it's, not a, it's, it's actually not so much about you protecting yourself from everybody else as much as it is 
you protecting everybody else from yourself because especially with this with you know you can be carrying this and not know it um and i was like well you know what so if everybody wore masks then we'd all be like hey i'm doing this because i care about you and i thought man if more people thought of it that way then when you go in the grocery store and you saw somebody with a mask on you'd be like hey thanks for wearing a mask you know you're great you know and it'd be more of you know like i said outward focused rather than inward focused rather than thinking you know somebody's scared of you or 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 doesn't want to get your germs you know it'd be outward focused in the sense that they care about you enough that they're wearing a mask and i thought you know what that's that's neat and if we could all just shift our mindset a little bit so let's see was it yesterday no, one yesterday it was the day before we went to the grocery store and I wore a mask in the grocery store for the first time. And that was, I think, the day after or maybe the day of that I heard that podcast. And uh, so it felt weird at first, but you know what? I just walked in there and I was like, you know, what? it doesn't really matter what other people think. I just know that in my mind I'm doing it because I care about everybody that's in here and I want to uh, I want to do my part. So. Kind of the same with me wanting to make this jug to, to donate it as a, as a uh, to help out a charity because I just, you know, there are lots of times that, you know, I'm not a doctor and I'm not going to go, you know, to New York City and, you know, offer my help because there's not really much I can do. I don't have the expertise to, to do anything to help. Um, so, you know, a lot of times we, you know, we think, well, what am I going to do? You know, if you're not a healthcare worker and you're not... You know, I don't, I don't own a restaurant where I could, you know, offer discounted meals or, you know, any, you know, just lots of things that you think, well, maybe this could do, I could help this, you know, or I could offer free meals to healthcare workers, you know, or something like that. And I thought, you know what, I, you know, just giving pottery away is not necessarily going to help people in the long run. But then I thought, well, I could always make a piece that maybe somebody would be willing to buy and then donate that money to some charity or some local organization who is doing that. So... That was that was the idea behind it. Um, I think oftentimes there's things that we can all do that we don't realize initially, but we just have to think of it in more of a creative way, rather than just thinking that your direct action may not be the thing that helps people, but maybe you can do something that then in turn allows somebody else uh, the direct action, you know, of helping somebody else. So.
that's probably one of the hardest things to learn how to do as far as an intermediate or advanced level of throwing is how to take a the top of a pot and narrow it in like that as you all know if any of you are potters that's always and, and it's still a challenge no matter how much experience you have to, to make sure you get the right proportion of clay there to leave to make that top to bring it in and then still have enough clay to uh, to make the, the style of top you want I was just trying to uh, flatten that down on the top to get that big flat uh, wide area there. Got a little bit of a wobble right there where I worked on that so much, but I think it's going to be fine. Won't even be hard. Won't even be noticeable by the time it's uh, got all the faces on it and all that. Yeah, I caught it with my fingernail on the way up there. Let me, uh, I knew I'd done that, but I couldn't see it as it was spinning. There we go, got rid of that. So there we go, let's, uh, let's measure this and see how, see what size it is. see we got uh, about 14 and a half inches sorry my, my ruler starts at 18 and goes to 36 <laughs> That's, I can read uh, if you've watched me before you probably know I have two of these I had cut I bought a uh, because it was a solid metal ruler a 30 uh, a yardstick I cut it in half so I'd have two 18 inch rulers because where do you find an 18 inch ruler and and potters often you know if you're going to throw bigger things you're going to need a ruler that's bigger than 18 inches so, <laughs> so got an 18 inch ruler but it starts at 18 and goes to 36 and this one goes to about 32 and a half so that's 14 and a half inches tall and uh yeah we're at about uh eight inches wide at the widest point there so all right here let's uh yeah, 14 and a half. Um, sorry, I'm sure I missed a lot of comments and all that, but uh, let me scroll up here. Yeah, it's uh, six pounds, I'm sure. I think I saw somebody answer you there. Yeah, Mary, yeah, I'm definitely thinking of something along those lines. Yeah, uh, Danny, I did. I, I used some uh, I used some silicone spray first, and then I had some uh, belt, automotive belt conditioner I put on the belt, on the wheel. <laughs> no, not necessarily another challenge, but... Uh, but if you want it to be, then uh, make a six pound jug. And <laughs> I just figured I, <coughs> I would just make it and not measure it, to be honest with you. But I figured for you guys to know scale, to see the size of it, and then to actually know how big it is, uh, you would like to know uh, actual size. So for me, I think, yeah, for six pounds, uh, yeah, it feels really good to me. And uh, there's, the, there's the top on it. Get my little roll at the bottom for the foot. So let's uh, let's throw another one because that way if if uh, for some reason I mess up one, we'll have a second or maybe we'll just auction off two of them. That wouldn't be a bad thing either, would it? Oh, uh, and, and also I'll show you guys, I'm getting ready to uh, unload a bisque kiln today. And uh, hold on, let me get this on here.
Gonna unload a bis kiln today, and in the bis kiln, this was out of the top. I've got my uh, social distancing 2020 mugs that are in the bisque. There's the shorter one, and there's the taller one. And so, uh, yeah, my <laughs> my initial run of these, I made I made like 40 of them, and I put them on Instagram and Facebook for. Uh, you know, pre-orders for local people that can pick them up, and then I, I'm going to put some on Etsy as well for any of those who are not local. And my pre-orders have now reached about 75. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess I need to make more. So I have about 100 in my best kiln back there, and then uh, I'll still be making more because I, I wanted to probably put at least 50 on Etsy. So... Don't want to deprive the people on, that, that aren't local. So, all right, I'm gonna grab another six pounds here. We'll make another jug. <laughs> well, I understand, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I've, I've, I probably have a, a little bit more practice than you do. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. I think you, you said on the video you'd been throwing a long time maybe, but uh, you've taken some time off. So it's, it's not a contest though. Yeah, well, I, when I put them on Etsy, I definitely will have uh, uh, any, uh, you know, a lot of people... Uh, well, not a lot of people. The ones that have signed up on Etsy, some, I mean, on, on Patreon, some of them uh, uh, are getting, are, will get an advanced uh, notice and a, and a brief period of time to, uh, to purchase ahead of time. But you're right. That wouldn't be a bad thing to, uh, to offer maybe a discount on, uh, on Patreon as well. And maybe not even do those on Etsy. Just do them independent. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of glad I didn't do my video yesterday too, because I I wasn't really feeling 100 percent either. That probably was part of the reason I didn't feel like making a video. But uh, I kept having to re-record parts because I just did, you know. <laughs> so. So as, as I explained in my, uh, my video from Tuesday about centering or uh, centering, opening and pulling, if I'm going to make anything tall or just anything that's going to, uh, you know, that I don't want it to get real wide. So pretty much anything but a bowl or a plate, I try to start with the shape going in like this. Um, uh, and that helps. And I try to pull towards the center of the wheel also when I'm pulling. Now, I'm originally from New York, at least I was born in New York, and then uh, my family moved to North Carolina when I was pretty young, so most of my life has been in North Carolina, yes. So you can see if I, if I like pull towards the center of the wheel, I'm still getting that cone shape. And that's going to help, especially because I'm going to make the 
uh, top of this come in to be a jug. Really, if I was making anything tall, just it just helps the process of pulling more clay out of the bottom if you have that uh, cone shape rather than going outward. So as I said earlier, if you if you if you just got here or here recently, this is gonna uh, this live stream will replace my video that I would normally have uh, go up on Saturday morning. And then I'll uh, I'll start back have another video ready for uh, for Tuesday. I'm gonna do one more pull. Let me back you guys up a little bit. I'm about to reach the extent of my camera angle there. <laughs> Alright, so for anybody who wants to know, that is 16 and almost 16 and a half inches. Uh, so. And now as I shape it'll it'll get shorter. Now we'll get this top closed in. At least that's the plan.
I think I pulled the top of this one a little more than the last one, so it's going to probably be a little bit more challenging. One of the things I like I like to do to make sure uh, when when uh, bringing in the top of a, a jug or a bottle is to make sure this shoulder right here is nice and rounded because if I get a sharp curve, that's going to make it buckle more easily uh, or, or or have more of a chance of collapsing. And like I said, I, I, you've probably seen me before. I just wet uh, just the part there that I want to work on. So that water's not soaking into the rest of the belly of the pot, especially on this shoulder here. Oh man. It's almost looking like I need a torch to <laughs> stiffen this up a little bit. We're going to try to get by without it. See what we can do. Like I said on the last one, that's one of the most challenging things for even a intermediate to advanced level of throwing is, is to bring the top of a piece in and the larger the piece, the harder that is. Unless you're throwing in sections, I've found that if I'm throwing in sections and one of the reasons I throw pots in sections is it's, it makes that actually process a lot easier uh, at least the way that I do it, it does. All right, now I'm going to cut the top off of this one because that that wobble there is actually going. If I leave that, it's as I go to neck that in, that's going to affect the the part below it more than if I cut it off. Then I don't have that creating more of a wobble that affects the the weaker spot down below it. There we go. There's some nice decoration. Get off. All right. All right, so now that we got that cut off, that should help bring this top in without causing more wobbling down below it. At least that's the plan. about a challenge. Now, if I was impatient at all uh, during that, that would not have happened. So it was too, uh, too delicate to if I was impatient, that could have I could have ruined that easily.
yeah, I won't be able to do the exact top I would like to do on that, but uh, that's still still a jug. And let's see how tall this one is. We're a quarter inch shorter than the last one, so 14 and a quarter instead of 14 and a half. Um, that's still pretty good. Hey, Harry. How you doing, bud? All right, now let me move you guys a little closer and I'll check out comments. Thank you guys for all, all for being here. And thank you guys that are helping out for uh, uh, answering questions for people here. <clears throat> oh, I scrolled back too far. I'm trying to look at to... Uh, Hey, stories and stoneware. Hey, I understand. It's uh, no worries. Hey, it was just a fun little challenge. Nothing. Uh, uh, six inches out of one pound of clay. That's not bad either. Just, uh, just keep it up. I probably just have a lot more practice than you. Oh yes, yeah, Sally. That's pretty funny. Yeah, the slats over here giving you a, a, a height. This is a measuring gauge behind me. Hey, Marcus, yeah, that last pull, I think the cylinder, would, uh, what did I say, 18 and a half inches, something like that? Yeah, uh, Bob, I, I hardly ever use a heat gun. Uh, I actually don't even own a heat gun. I have, a, I have like a weed burner that's a, a torch, propane torch, uh, and then I have a small, I have a, a hair dryer and then a small, uh, small uh, torch, but I don't have a heat gun. I need to get one, but... Yeah, Harry, I'm making a face jug that I'm going to, um, yeah, yeah, there you go. Thank you, Sally. Uh, biggest pot I've thrown with one lump of clay. Um, I know I made a 25-pound bowl. Uh, that's a video from, uh, I think, earlier this year, or late last year, um, or early last year, maybe even, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really happy with that uh, with that bowl. I might need to do that one again. Hey, Stephen, welcome. Thank you, <laughs> John. That's awesome. Uh, thanks for being here. Yeah, I love watching people throw. Um, yeah, Scott, I'm not gonna I'm gonna do face jugs on these uh, because I'm going to uh, auction. Uh, I'm gonna do multiple faces. I've got two jugs now. I'm gonna do multiple faces on them. And then um, each of the faces are going to have uh, a mask on them, of course, made out of a thin piece of clay. And <coughs> they're going to be uh, statement pieces for the time we're in. I'm going to auction them off to give the money uh, to a local charity to help out some people uh, with what's going on right now. Good. <laughs> Donuts. Yeah. I'm glad this was inspirational for you. Yeah, the weed burner would do it, but it might be a little overkill on something this size. I use the uh, <coughs> I use the uh, weed burner for when I make my my really big pots. I use it to, as I after I throw a section, I use it to torch it uh, to really stiffen up that whole form. So if I'm making like 50, 60 pound pots, uh, that's what I do that for. Hey, welcome from Scotland. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely let you know when I'm doing the auction. I'll. Uh, <coughs> I haven't decided how I'll do that auction yet. Now that I have two of these, I might do one local auction and maybe one on eBay or or Facebook or something like that as a way uh, to auction off the other piece. Um, uh, shipping one of these would be a little diff difficult, but uh, yeah, I knew what you meant, auction instead of option. But uh, all right, let's uh, I tell you what we'll uh, we might as well throw another one while we at while we're at it. I don't know. Well, if we'll uh, auction all of them off, but hey, while we're here, we're only 45 minutes in, might as well make another one. So yeah, oh man, this feels so light. I'm so happy with that. Out of six pounds of clay, to me, that is, uh, that's one heck of a pot. So 
I'm, I'm definitely happy with that. All right, that one down there. Thank you so much. All right, let's see. Get that. Back you guys up. There we go. Oops. <laughs> yeah, 50 pounds on a kick wheel. Yeah, I believe I'd probably need a nap and a bowl of Wheaties, too. <laughs> just, to, just to be able to get up off the floor. I've actually never thrown on a kick wheel, so... Uh, no, these are actually... Uh, this is going to be in my... Uh, uh, because I want to get these out sooner... Uh, to auction them off. These are going to be in my gas kiln, uh, but I'll probably just spray my ash glaze that I have on them so it'll still have a real rustic look to them. Uh, I would love to have one for the wood kiln, and maybe uh, maybe I'll make one for the wood kiln anyway, and, and it'll just come out later. Um, but uh, these are definitely for my gas kiln, and that's really, like I said, only because I want the turnaround time to be shorter. Um, if I, like I said, I'd I don't know exactly yet when I'm going to uh, do my wood firing uh, because I'm definitely going to need help for that. And, uh, you know, I know I could have a couple people come over here and help with it. Uh, but right now there's just not a, a big rush for that because whenever I'm going to have my kiln opening, I want people to be able to come to that. And right now people can't do that either. So I figured I would focus on a few other things that I know I could do, like I'm doing these the social distancing mugs um, that I'm going to fire in my gas kiln. I'm going to do some more pieces <clears throat> in my gas kiln that I can sell on Etsy. Um, just things that I know that I can do to... And I know I could sell some of my wood-fired pieces on Etsy as well, but like I said, that that process of, of loading and firing the wood kiln is a lot bigger process, and uh, I'm going to need help for that. So. <clears throat> Just kind of delay in that just a little bit until uh, until we can be a little more free to move about and and have some people come down and help me with that plus now that uh, I knew things were changing I switched over and made a bunch of pieces for my gas kiln and so I actually need to get back and make more pots for the wood kiln first before I can um, fire it anyway so I think, uh, I think next weekend was supposed to be my kiln opening. I think it is, but, uh, so all the postcards I sent out for that, uh, and gave out, but, uh, I'm sure people know, maybe I should post about it anyways, make sure people know that it's not actually happening. <laughs> Yeah, whoever, I can't remember now, whoever it was said they'd been, oh, John, I think, said you've been uh, throwing for 50 years and still love to watch other people throw. Yeah, I'm still fascinated every time I see somebody else throw at how different that they throw than I do and from everybody else. I mean, everybody just throws so different. The way they hold their sponge, the way they center, the way they 
charcoal in shape. It is pretty fascinating to see. Um, you know, fi bis firing in my electric kiln is definitely easier because I can just, it's got the computer on it, I can just program it and, and walk away, which is what I did yesterday for my bisque, or, uh, might have been the day before. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty nice to bis fire in, in an electric kiln because I can just program it and walk away and come back, uh, and check on it. And then, you know, when it's done, it's like, you know, I didn't have to do anything, but program it and hit a button and it fires itself so uh, I definitely like that but uh, I definitely like being able to fire a whole lot more pots at one time <clears throat> I think my uh, my gas kiln is about <coughs> uh, yeah set it and forget it there you go uh, I don't forget about it because I, 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 I still just have I've had enough electric kilns that I've never had one like catch on fire, you know, the electrical parts of it or anything, but I have had it burn wires into before and, and cut off. And uh, so it, they, they still bother me and worry me in a small sense. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I think my gas kiln is about uh, a little over 20 cubic feet, maybe 22 cubic feet. So that's twice as big as my uh, electric kiln. As far as stacking space or space that I can put pots so and <clears throat> you guys can't see that whole thing there you go as far as you knew it was stretching up to the ceiling all right so let's measure that uh, that one is 18 and 3 quarters cylinder I think I have pulled a cylinder I don't know I think I pulled a six pound cylinder like 20 inches before, but I was making a tall skinny bottle and I wanted it real skinny to begin with, so. To get much taller, I'd have to stand up to do my first uh, shape there. Yeah, so if, if anybody's new, I'm making uh, I'm making some jugs because I'm going to take probably at least two of them that I'm uh, making here and I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to make them into face jugs and they're going to be, uh, uh, instead of having one big face jug, it's going to have a few smaller faces and all the faces are going to have uh, masks on them as kind of like a statement piece for this time. That we're going through and uh, they're going to spread apart so it's got the social distancing element to it uh, and then uh, i'm going to auction uh, auction them off and give the money to a local charity to help out uh, some people in need during this time so that's what we're doing with this <clears throat> yeah yeah there you go six pound uh, 22 inch bottle of course the you know it got a little taller after i you know made the top on it so yeah that uh <laughs> Sometimes I look back at videos like that and I'm like, how in the world did I do that? <laughs> 22 inches out of 6 pounds? I'm like, I don't even want to try to do that again. Maybe we'll make this one fatter. It kind of is going that way. Uh, more of a round shape than the previous two were. <clears throat> more straighter at the at the base maybe we'll go fat with this one 
I think I got enough clay in the top there that I can do that and get away with it. See, I will, um, I haven't decided all the details yet or even where the money's going to go yet. Um, but uh, if I do two of them, I might auction one local and one online um, so that, you know, somebody who's not local could get a chance at, at bidding on one. Um, but I will announce all that as these, uh, whenever these get finished. I'll definitely make sure everybody knows uh, and give uh, plenty of notice. Like I said, my, and my reasoning behind all this was because I, you know, I just wanted to, I wanted to help out so bad with all that's going on. And then I think, well, I'm, I'm a potter. I'm not a, I'm not a healthcare worker. I don't, you know, you know, and I have a family, so it's not like I can just pack up and go somewhere to, to help out. Um, and you're not supposed to do that anyways I mean unless you know unless you have the expertise that you need to do something like that so uh, uh, I thought man what what can I do to, to help and I thought well you know I could I could auction off a piece that I have and I have some pieces left over from my first firing that I thought about doing that with and I thought well it'd be more it'd be more unique if I would make something special um, to auction off and then I thought, well, I've got these social distancing mugs, and I thought about auctioning off some of those, and I thought, no, um, I'd like it to be something bigger, um, kind of more, you know, that might bring in some more money um, so that I could raise more money for, for whatever uh, charity it goes to. So <clears throat> then I had the face jug idea, and then I had the, uh, then I, like I said, I had the idea of, of putting the faces on it, uh, that are spread apart from each other and then they all have masks on um, So yeah, so even the masks like I said, they'll be made out of clay um, So these are probably gonna take me a while to put put the faces on and maybe we'll do another live stream And I'll, I'll after I do a couple faces and I've kind of got it figured out Maybe we'll uh, do part of a live stream where I'm putting a couple of the faces on as well um, That'll help spread more awareness about what I'm doing and, and maybe help raise some interest so that we can raise more money. Yeah, I was also very inspired by a, uh, uh, there's a comedian that I like, Michael Jr. And he recently uh, had, a, had a comedy special all ready to release. <clears throat> and uh, and he uh, he decided after all this happened that he was just going to release it all on YouTube for free, um, and uh, and not charge for it because you know and he can't do the tour and all that kind of stuff right now. But and the and the name of the the comedy special was more than funny, and it was because uh, you know it was it was because he, he uh, he's a Christian number one, but also uh, more than funny in the sense that it's it's you know. It's not just funny, it's really funny, but also the fact that he tells some very inspiring stories in the middle of that uh, and, and really encouraging everybody to get involved and, and to, to help out each other, that we all have a role to play and, and that we, we don't need to just always leave it to the huge organizations to, to do big things uh, or to do things to help out. You know, there's something that you can do uh, and uh, yeah, he told some stories on there that were just, you know, really just bring you to tears because they were pretty amazing. And uh, so, really kind of cool. So that inspired me, plus like I said, I just wanted to do something to help out anyways. Um,
So yeah, when 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 uh, when we do get to the point that uh, these these jugs are finished and we and we get ready to do the auction or I post about this and the ideas, if you guys follow me on Instagram or Facebook, uh, if you can help spread the word about it, that'd be even better. Because like I said, this is going to be all all to raise money. Every single dime that comes out of these is going to be. Uh, for a local charity of some kind, which I will decide on that pretty soon as well, um, to help out some people during this time. So yeah, this one is definitely not as tall as the other ones, but it's definitely a lot wider, a lot more bulbous. still almost 14 and more like nine and a half inches wide something like that somebody's honking at me driving by <clears throat> so yeah out of six pounds man I like that it's a lot it's a it's a lot of pot for six pounds that didn't sound right <laughs> Uh. Especially if you're British. Pounds is money over there. <laughs> Not a weight. <laughs> uh. Alright. Let me get you guys closer here and look at comments. Yeah, the, the Lucius, if you're still here, the gas kiln, I didn't build it, but it is like a homemade kiln. Um, I bought the frame um, <clears throat> and then uh, lined it with a soft brick. Uh, stories and stoneware, yeah, there is. There are a couple videos, uh, one about loading, one about firing, and one about unloading my, uh, my wood kiln. <clears throat> yeah, Michael, I do uh, put salt in the wood kiln. Melba, thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoy the mug and, and the inspiration. I'm glad it's I'm glad uh, the videos are inspiring. <clears throat> uh let's see. Yeah, Sally, I'll definitely do a live stream of a couple of the faces. <laughs> Danny. Yeah. Oh, I don't do uh I don't do uh salt in the uh wood or in the gas kiln. Um I have heard that salt will affect advancer shelves. So uh, yeah, I know you can use advancers in <clears throat> in a wood kiln if it's not salted, at least that's what I've heard. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, uh, because I know Ben Owen uh, uses some advancer uh, shelves in the front uh, chamber or two of his wood kiln. He has a multi-chamber kiln, and so he uses some advancers in that in the front part, um, and they work just fine. So I think just something about the salt does affect them. Uh, now, the, the, shelf, the kiln shelves I have for my wood kiln are made by the same company that does make advancers. They're made by St. Gobain and sold through kilnshelf.com. <clears throat> so, anyway, sounds like my voice is trying to leave me, so I think we'll probably end it there. So that's a little over an hour. Uh, we got those three jugs made, and then uh, we'll we'll come back and do another, another live stream where I put a couple of the faces on these, um, and then we'll, uh, like I said, just raise a whole bunch of awareness and hopefully raise a bunch of money for a local charity to... Uh, um, uh, to help out some people during this time. So I think that's, hey, I'd much rather us as, as a community help each other out. Uh, that's going to be more meaningful and we can, we can more effectively do it, I think, 
uh, than anybody else. So you guys are welcome, definitely. I'm, I'm glad to be here, like I said. But this is replacing the video I would have had for today. So <clears throat> Carla, thanks for being here. Yeah, you too, Michael. Have a blessed Easter. Yeah, we're going to have a drive-in service today at 5 o'clock this afternoon. So we have to go get ready for that as well. My wife actually <clears throat> leads the music at the church. So we're actually doing the service. So I have to help go help set up and all that stuff. Yeah, you guys are welcome. Thank you guys for being here as always. And uh, just to really appreciate the support on, on all the videos um, and uh, YouTube channel. It's I've had a lot less views, uh, which I thought, I was talking to John the Potter the other day, and I thought <clears throat> during this time that I'd get more views because <clears throat> everybody's at home. But I guess people are probably more distracted and, and paying attention to other things. And he told me the same thing, that his views had dropped. And I thought, well, I'm not too worried about it. I'm, I'm trying not to look at all those statistics, you know, I'm just trying to focus on putting out the videos and then, uh, you know, over time it'll, 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 it'll work itself out. So, uh, but anyway, like I said, I appreciate your support on the YouTube channel, on Patreon, on all my social media. You guys are awesome and I appreciate you. And yeah, like I said, hopefully maybe one of you guys will end up with one of these jugs and uh, the money that you give will go to help some people here locally. So anyway, appreciate you guys. Love you guys. And we'll see you uh, in the next video in the next live stream. All right. Take care.